Got a couple different takes here today. Pierce Morgan and Angela Merkel weighing in on things. Let's get through this real quick. What's up, everybody? How's it going? <laughs> we are many days into this, and we're going to be talking about this for a while, I guess. Piers Morgan, Trump the Terrible, deserves to be dumped from the presidency and from Twitter. But why don't our social media masters have the guts to ban Iran and China's genocidal monsters, too? It's been eerily quiet on Twitter since Donald Trump was kicked off the platform last Friday evening, silencing the world's biggest social media, Foghorn. There was an immediate and urgent imperative to temporarily shut Trump down, given the horrendous rampage at the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday, that he had so outrageously and recklessly fueled. Now, keep in mind, Pierce Morgan actually wrote this article, and, you know, <laughs> just take that for what it's worth, which was the very genuine fear there will be more violence from his frenzied mob of supporters, a threat that remains extremely high, given how dangerously brainwashed they have become thanks to Trump's incessant false claims to have had the election stolen from him. But this wasn't just a suspension. Twitter announced it was banning Trump for life. I refuse to call him president anymore because he shouldn't be, and very soon won't be. Ooh, yeah, you, you tell him, Pierce, you stick it to him, girl. It said, after close review of recent tweets from the at real Donald Trump account and the context around them, would have permanently suspended the account due to the risk of further incitement of violence. In the context of horrific events this week, we made it clear on Wednesday that the additional violations of Twitter rules would potentially result in this very course of action. Interestingly enough, some people were saying that they didn't necessarily, Twitter, Facebook, and such, that he didn't necessarily, in so many words, incite it. But they chose to kick him off anyway. When I was thinking about that, assuming that's factual, I didn't look into that in terms of their justification, but... I was thinking that perhaps they went that route for liability purposes, because if they came out and did something to slander him in a way, say they came out and said, yeah, it was all Trump's fault he did this, he's the direct cause of this, then that's obviously going to cost them in the long run, should he decide to sue defamation being what it is liable. So that's just what I thought about when I heard that they stopped short of saying he was directly responsible. They kind of and I use that word salad, right, to kind of beat around the bush for, as I said, liability's sake. That's just my thought. Again, I didn't look into what exactly they said, but when I heard people talking about it, that was kind of something that popped in my mind. A Pierce says it's not hard to argue with the logic of this statement if you do believe, as I do, that Trump was directly responsible for his supporters attacking the Capitol and therefore attacking the very heart of American democracy to try to overturn a fair and... <laughs> Democratic election result. Okay, okay. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. Let's get to the point where he talks about Iran and China. That's what I'm interested in. How does Twitter square this with the fact that the Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran still has an account? The man who tweeted this on June 2018. Our stance against Israel is the same stance we have always taken. Israel is a malignant cancerous tumor in the West Asian region, and that has to be removed and eradicated. It is possible, and it will happen. Khomeini is self-evidently a world leader using Twitter, not just to incite violence against a whole country and its 8.8 .8 million people, but to have it and them eradicated. He also made a direct threat against Americans for the killing of Iran's military supremo, General Soleimani, a year ago, tweeting on December 16, 2020. Those who ordered the murder of General Soleimani, as well as those who carried this out, shall be punished. This revenge will certainly happen at the right time. And the Ayatollah, he got him. He got Trump. He's there laughing on Twitter, probably. Or no, maybe he's laughing in private now. He's right. The Ayatollah got his revenge. Trump is off of Twitter now. <laughs> All right. That's, look, I stay off of Twitter as much as possible. It's cancer. I, <laughs> I, not literal cancer, but it could be. It could make some weird stuff grow in your head. And I'm staying away from it, but to think that somebody like that has an account, not surprising when we see all of the terrorists, BLM, Antifa, all of the politicians spewing their hate, all of the individuals on there throwing death threats at everybody. It's 
it's a crazy place. And I think that people, Pierce makes a great point in this regard, that people just want the standard to be fair across the board. I don't think anybody, well, okay, let me take that back. Maybe some people would. You talk about freedom of speech, but I don't think many people would have any issues if all of the douchebags were booted off. Everybody out there who's talking smack, you could cite that First Amendment and everything like that. And then, of course, you hear the private business, they can do what they want. But if the rules were applied equitably, if they were, then perhaps it'd be a better place for everybody. Politics being what they are, Dorsey and his clan obviously cater to certain sides of the argument. And that's what the people on the right are talking about. And that's why they search out alternatives. But as I said, I think people, by and large, most people, probably 70, 80, 85% of people just would like to see things done equitably. And there be a place where people don't have to go and see the kind of trash that appears on Twitter. So let's get into what he's saying about China. Several days ago, the Chinese embassy in the U.S. tweeted an outrageous defense of China's appalling genocidal abuse of Uyghur Muslims. It read, Study shows that in the process of eradicating extremism, hmm, eradicating extremism, so that's what China's going with. I, I've been hearing this verbiage used by our politicians, corporate leaders, celebrities these past few days that these extremists must be eradicated. Hmm. The minds of Uyghur women in Xinjiang were emancipated and gender equality and reproductive health were promoted, making them no longer baby-making machines. They are more confident and independent. The truth is that over a million Uyghur Muslims have been incarcerated in concentration camps over the past few years, and women inmates have been subjected to vile program, a forced sterilization. Initially and shockingly, Twitter said the tweet didn't violate its policies. Then under pressure, it decided it did, and replaced it with a message saying, this tweet violated the Twitter rules. It goes on to say here, but the Chinese embassy's account has not been permanently banned for endorsing genocide. Let's go on and see what Merkel's talking about. Merkel calls Trump's permanent Twitter ban problematic and says freedom of opinion is a fundamental right. Merkel's spokesman said freedom of opinion is a fundamental right of elementary significance. After the U.S. president was permanently banned from Twitter, added social platforms should not let politics be poisoned by hatred and lies. Twitter cited a risk of further incitement of violence in the reason for the ban. On Monday, Twitter competitor Parler was also taken down by Amazon, and I talked about that in my video yesterday. Now, this is from the spokesperson, as I just mentioned. Obviously, we have to assume these are her words. But she says, or he says, while tech giants were right not to stand back, and were justified in red flagging Trump's tweets, banning his account altogether was a step too far, he said. He added that social media bosses bear great responsibility for political communication, not being poisoned by hatred, by lies, and by incitement to violence. France's Prime Minister Bruno Le Maire also voiced doubts about Trump's ban today, telling France in a radio that it should not be for the digital oligarchy to regulate itself. Echoing Merkel's spokesman, Le Maire said that the regulatory decisions should be taken by elected government officials rather than by American corporate bosses. And that's what I've heard some people talking about. It's basically you have the heads of these powerful tech monopolies that now control or can control what's said, when it's said, and who can say it. And it's funny because that's what I've alluded to in the past. You have a situation where individuals are out here arguing for this. They're loving this. They love seeing this. And obviously those are the individuals on the far left, like authoritarian types that love this kind of stuff. Twitter's full of them. So when I think about it, I'm sitting there like, you don't want this. You do not want this kind of stuff. But to try to rationalize with somebody like that, it's a waste of time because they do want that. Authoritarians do want control. They want to be able to dictate the conversation to all of us. But to the rational individual out there, you watching this video, whether you agree with it or not, I've said this in the past and I'll say it again, you don't want individuals like that, billionaires, corporations, whomever, to have this power to dictate to us what we can say, what we can listen to, because it, it just keeps going down that road. Some people call it a slippery slope. 
I would say that that's underestimating it because it never will stop. We keep moving further and further down that road. So as I said, to call it a slippery slope is really underestimating it. You want to know what somebody's all about. I've talked about this in my videos in the past. You want to hear what somebody's about. Good ideas should defeat bad ideas and logic most of the time. It should happen. That's why I always be an advocate for free speech because you see now what's happening. You have one side of the political aisle now in conjunction with all these corporate leaders, tech individuals who contribute to their campaigns, Wall Street, same thing, athletes, celebrities, I've mentioned it before, you have one side of the aisle that's really out here trying to seize power and dictate to people how they should think, and that should be concerning to people. I know it's hard, I get it, I get it. You don't like the guy. You think he's the worst person ever. They told you that for four years. I get it, you hate him, you want, oh, you got him, oh, we got him. You're like that idiot Rappaport who's cheering on Twitter, I believe it was, when he got the announcement. Rrr. You have to think big picture. It should be terrifying to anybody to think that there's individuals that can make these decisions for us. And that's what I always argue when I mention it to people is, why would you want to be on your knees and be told how you can think? You have to be smart enough that whenever you hear something or see something, you just ignore it, or you turn away from it, or you come up with an argument that's sound and fact-based to where you defeat bad ideas. To me, it's as simple as that. And let me just wrap this up by saying this, and I talked about this yesterday. It's if you have a situation, okay, so Twitter's already this echo chamber. Reddit, same thing. You can point to things on the conservative side and say the same thing as well. I don't doubt it. I stay off social media. If you know of sites that are like that, you can let me know because I don't pay attention. You don't want to keep purging one side of the debate off. And we're talking specifically in terms of Twitter, Trump, Facebook, same thing, conservative voices, specifically for this example. And again, like I said, you can point to other sites on the right that maybe do this to people on the left. I don't know. You don't want to keep purging people off. Twitter's already a cesspool. The more and more people you kick off, the worse the echo chamber is going to get. When you only have people like-minded in there and they get wound up like politicians have done to them for the last four years, being told that Trump is the second coming of you know who, it just, there's no pushback. When there's no pushback, it's easy to manipulate people like this. And they go down that road and they get mentally effed up. And they end up like Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And on the right, they can end up as white supremacists. Like you just, you don't want this, man. I'm just telling you, coming from a rational person, you don't want this. You want the public square to have all the voices in it, debate the good ideas, cast away the bad, but you don't want people in power. You don't want tech people, billionaires, being able to tell you how to think, when to think, and what to think. It it's, should be scary to people. I think to most rational people it is. You have to see past your hatred of individuals and recognize that you don't want to be caught up in an echo chamber. You don't want to be that Antifa person out on the street. You don't want to be that BLM person smashing businesses and smashing heads. You don't want to be those people at the Capitol throwing fire extinguishers and smashing the one cop up against the door where he was screaming or the one other cop getting beaten with a flagpole or dragged down the stairs. You don't want to let yourself get wrapped up and become that person. That's, that's all I would argue. So what do you think? You can tell me to F off. I, maybe you agree, maybe disagree, but you just don't want to be that person. So all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Be well. Mentally, be well. Don't let this happen to you. Don't let the echo chamber get you. <laughs> Take care, everybody.